my favorite fairy tales as a little girl was Cinderella. Cinderella lost her mother at a young age and her father remarried and her new stepmother, along with her two new stepsisters, did not like her at all. The stepmother bought her two daughters all the best of everything, new clothes, beautiful shoes, and she bought nothing for Cinderella. She had to wear only hand-me-downs. Cinderella was forced to work in the house all day long. The only time she could rest was in the evening for a while, sitting by the fire near the cinders. That's why they called her Cinderella. Even dressed in rags, Cinderella was beautiful. And her stepsisters, dressed in their finest, could not compare to the beauty of Cinderella. One day, new dresses arrived at the house for the two sisters in preparation for a ball to be held at the palace. Cinderella was told she could not attend. Instead, she needed to work at home and make the beds up for her sisters when they returned. Once everyone left, the house was empty and there was Cinderella sitting alone. She was very sad that she couldn't go to the ball at the palace. And then, all of a sudden, a fairy godmother appeared and told her, I know you would love to go to the ball. I can't. I only have these rags to wear. They would never let me in. The fairy godmother smiled, waved her wand, and all of a sudden Cinderella was wearing the most beautiful ball gown she had ever seen. With another wave of the wand, a pumpkin became a magnificent coach. The cat became a coachman, and some mice became the horses. Now, as you know, these kinds of things can happen in fairy tales. Just before Cinderella left for the ball, the fairy godmother told her one more thing. It was very important. She must return before midnight because at the stroke of midnight, her dress would turn back to rags, the coach a pumpkin, the coachman a cat, and the horses would become mice again. When she arrived at the palace, and entered the room. The prince fell madly in love with her the moment he laid eyes on her. He whisked her onto the dance floor and they danced and danced and danced. Everyone wondered, who is this magnificent beauty who has captured the prince's heart? And then the clock began the countdown to midnight. The moment Cinderella heard the beginning strokes of the clock, she stepped away from the prince and began running as fast as she could. As she ran down the steps of the palace, one of her slippers fell off her foot. She couldn't stop. She kept going, leaving the slipper behind. The prince ran after her and stopped, realizing she had fled into the night. He saw the slipper, picked it up, and gave it to his assistants. He ordered them to take the slipper throughout the kingdom, having every young woman try it on to find the perfect fit, knowing that then they would find his one true love. Finally, they came to the house where Cinderella lived. The two stepsisters tried to fit their big feet into the slipper, but they could not. Are there any other young women in this house? Well, only one, snapped the stepmother, but she could not have possibly been at the ball. We have to obey our master and have her try on the shoe. When they held out the shoe, Cinderella's foot slipped in smoothly and easily. They immediately whisked her away to the palace, much to the shock and the dismay of the stepmother and her daughters. The prince happily embraced Cinderella. They married, the kingdom was at peace, and they lived happily ever after. Don't you just love the love story of the very best fairy tales? The handsome prince, whisks the unassuming girl away into his arms and they live happily ever after. 
That's what we imagine, and that's our deep heart longing. We are embarking on a journey together, a woman's heart that dances, and we are going to embark on what I call the journey of the dance. The dance is an important metaphor that is biblical. The Bible teaches it. It represents our relationship with the Lord. So let's look at the metaphor of the dance. Turn to Ecclesiastes 3, verse 4. Here's what it says. Ecclesiastes 3, verse 4. There is a time to weep and a time to to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance. You see, there is a time to dance. Psalm 30 verses 11 and 12, it's a Psalm of David, and David says this, you have turned for me my mourning into dancing. You've loosed my sackcloth and clothed me with gladness, that my glory may sing your praise and not be silent, O Lord my God. I will give thanks to you forever. Your dance with the Lord is all about your relationship with Him. The dance is your response to Jesus' overtures, your surrender to His embrace, and your steps to follow His lead. Then you dance in a vibrant, intimate, ongoing relationship with your Lord. And so through every chapter in a woman's heart that dances, we are going to look at this metaphor of the dance. Now, what's so valuable about a metaphor? Well, a metaphor is a figure of speech where a word or phrase that normally designates one thing is used to designate another, thus making a comparison. Why are metaphors so valuable? Well, they create pictures in your mind, helping you understand something better. They are like a story, helping concepts become tangible and alive to the mind. One person has said metaphorical language is like gum, to be chewed over and savored, not gulped down. Another says that the metaphor is a kind of magical mental changing room where one thing for a moment becomes another and in that moment is seen in a whole new way. What do we mean when we talk about the dance? What can we learn from the metaphor of the dance? Thinking about our relationship with the Lord as a dance is going to teach us in intricate detail more than we can imagine. So, what are some of the things that we learn from the metaphor of the dance? And as I share these things, you are going to be drawn into the splendor of the dance. And then I want to ask you a most important question that I want you to begin thinking about. Will you dance with Him? Will you dance with Him? So what can we learn from this wonderful metaphor of the dance? Well, first, the dance teaches us about the romance in our relationship with Jesus. Oftentimes, I think we miss the romantic heart of our Lord. We don't get the passion inside of Him for us. We almost have a sterile view of Him and our relationship with Him. So when we look at the dance, we begin to see the interactive engagement between two people, the Lord and us. We see overtures from our Lord constantly reaching out to us. He says in Jeremiah 31 verse 3, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, I have drawn you with loving kindness. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, John 3:16. 1 John 3, 1, see how great a love the Father has bestowed on us, that we would be called children of God. When you think long and hard about your relationship with your Lord as a dance, you are going to become more convinced and aware of your partner and his amazing, incredible love for you. And then the dance teaches us about the intimacy in our relationship with Jesus. When two people dance, they are together, not apart. 
you are going to become sensitive to the nearness of your Lord and how intimately involved he is with you. In Revelation chapters 2 and 3, Jesus says, I know, at least seven times. And in those two intimate words is a world of meaning. To know that Jesus knows gives you that sense of intimacy. In Matthew 28, 20, Jesus says, Lo, I am with you always. James 4, 8, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. In John 15, verse 4, Jesus says, abide in me and I in you. Can't get much closer than that. When you think about two people dancing together, you have a picture of intimacy. And that's the picture we need to have of our relationship with Jesus. And then the dance teaches us about our responsibilities in our relationship with Jesus. Dance requires practice, learning, knowledge of steps, following the lead of our dance partner, and more. When you dance, you cannot be an observer or remain passive. You've got to get out on the dance floor to dance. When you read the Bible from cover to cover, you discover that God does not desire us to remain uninvolved, passive, or disinterested. He doesn't want spectators. He wants participants. And so, in our relationship with the Lord, we are to be still and know that He is God. Psalm 46, verse 10. Draw near to God. He will draw near to you. James 4, 8. We are to rightly handle the Word of God, studying it and letting it richly dwell within. And you see that in 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17, Colossians 3, 16. We are to think on what is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is of good repute. If there is any excellence, and if anything worthy of praise, dwell on these things. And that's Philippians 4, verse 8. And we are to walk by faith, not by sight, 2 Corinthians 5, verse 7. And I could go on and on. The dance helps us see the value and importance of the responsibility and appreciate our need for love, trust, and obedience in order to dance. Taking steps in the dance is also a responsibility. And we will see that in the days to come. Jesus expects us to dance. So the question is, will we dance with him? And then the dance teaches us about our joy and delight in our relationship with Jesus. There is such a joy and delight when you dance with the one you love. It's just plain fun to dance. And there is true joy in the presence of the Lord. In fact, Nehemiah tells us that the joy of the Lord is our strength. Jesus wants you to know his joy. He says in John 15, verse 11, These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be full. You see, when you dance, there are whispers in the conversation that occurs between you and your dance partner because you are close. And so it is with the Lord. He converses with us. And that conversation is the joy and delight of our heart. And the dance teaches us about our true identity in our relationship with Jesus. You are going to see the true nature of who you are when you dance with Jesus. And you will see that you are beautiful. Knowing the Lord changes us. In 2 Corinthians 5.17, we see, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. We become dancers, and you are going to learn what that means. You are a dancer, my friend. You are going to discover that you are chosen by God, and you are His beloved. You see, you are not meant to live in the barnyard dirt of this world, but in the beauty of His presence. You are a dancer. And the dance teaches us about the reality of our relationship with Jesus. 
Understanding the dance makes us realize the very real existence of our day-by-day -day and moment-by-moment -moment life. We walk and talk with Jesus. Jesus tells us in John 15, 4 and 5 to abide in Him and that apart from Him, we can do nothing. Paul was so taken with Jesus and the reality of his relationship with him that he said in Philippians 3, 8, for whatever gain I had, I counted as loss for the sake of Christ. Indeed, I count everything as loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. Understanding the dance will help us become consumed with our Lord. We become passionate about Jesus. When I realize I'm dancing with Jesus, then I think of Him more and more easily. I learn to practice His presence and focus on Him throughout the day. The dance teaches us about the purpose of our relationship with Jesus. Our dance with Jesus tells a story to the world. Our life glorifies God. In 2 Corinthians 3, verses 2 and 3, we see that we are letters from Christ, written not with ink, but with the Spirit of the living God, not on tablets of stone, but on tablets of human hearts. Your dance with Him always has purpose and a plan designed by God. You see it in Ephesians 2.10. For we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do the good things He planned for us long ago. You also see it in Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster, to give you a future and a hope. You see, the Lord has a plan and a purpose in your dance with Him, no matter what your circumstances are. And then the dance teaches us about the relevance of our relationship with Jesus. Life is always about our relationship with Jesus. In every situation, Jesus is inviting you to dance. In Matthew 11, 28 to 30, you see this invitation. Come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you because I am humble and gentle at heart and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy to bear and the burden I give you is light. And then the dance teaches us how to handle the circumstances, the joys and the sorrows in our relationship with Jesus. We learn that life is not easy. In fact, it's seemingly impossible at times. Jesus said in John 16, that in the world you will have tribulation, but take courage. I have overcome the world. We realize that even in the difficult times, He will give us His strength through the power of the Holy Spirit. We will learn to say, I can't, but He can. We realize that nothing is impossible with Him. Your dance partner, Jesus, is enough for anything that comes your way. And then the dance teaches us about the absolute beauty of our relationship with Jesus. Have you ever watched a dance and the beauty of it as two people move together across the dance floor? There is an amazing beauty when a person moves in harmony with Jesus, responding to his lead. The Lord said this about David. I have found in David, the son of Jesse, a man after my heart who will do all my will. That's Acts 13, 22. And we're going to explore those words in more detail in the days to come, but those are the words we want to have said about us. Because when they are, heaven will applaud the beauty of our dance with the Lord. And then the dance teaches us about the hope in our relationship with Jesus. No matter what you face, you can dance. For you don't lead, He does. He's got a plan, and He is going to teach you the steps you need to know in order to dance on the stage He has you on. Now that's real hope. It's not just theory. It's truth. It's not just reverie or fantasy. It's reality.
It means that there is nothing in life that can keep you down. Nothing. There's always hope with the Lord. Romans 15, 13 says, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you may abound in hope. Sometimes you will be tempted to give up. The fiery trial has gotten so hot, you don't know where to turn. Look up, my friend. You will realize that the Lord Jesus is holding out his hand and saying, My child, let's dance. Even in this, we can dance. I will show you the steps and the way. Just lean into my embrace and hold on to me. And finally, the dance teaches us about the future of our relationship with Jesus. We learn what life is really all about and that we have an eternal home where we will dance forever with our Lord. We learn that our eternal future promises life with the Lamb of God, our eternal dance partner. And someday we will see his face and his name will be on our foreheads. Revelation 22, 5 goes on to say, and night will be no more. They will need no light of lamp or sun for the Lord God will be their light and they will reign forever and ever. So that's just a glimpse of the metaphor of the dance. Now, what does the dance look like in real life? Well, we're going to see the dance with Jesus over and over again in many different events in the New Testament. But I today just want to look at four verses very quickly in Luke 21, verses 1 to 4. Just four verses give us such a picture of the dance and gives us a picture that speaks volumes. We are going to enter into this event in the life of Jesus where we put ourselves in that place and breathe in the atmosphere of the environment. So, turn in your Bibles to Luke 21, verses 1 to 4. Luke 21, verses 1 to 4. And he looked up and saw the rich putting their gifts into the treasury. And he saw a poor widow putting in two small copper coins. And he said, truly, I say to you, this poor widow put in more than all of them. For they all out of their surplus put into the offering. But she out of her poverty put in all that she had to live on. Think about this widow for a moment. The stage for her dance was poverty. She had no money or possessions and loss she experienced. She was a widow and she had lost her beloved and brokenness because of all she has gone through. Imagine the offering box in the temple. Heaven is watching. The widow and her Lord Jesus Oh, how they danced. Jesus loved her. He was watching. He saw all the way to her heart. And as she poured out to the Lord from her poverty, they danced. And Jesus loved the dance. He told everyone who would listen all about it. And he put the words of their dance in four verses in the Bible so that even you and I, could read about it. He shouted it to the world. We dance. Even on the stage of poverty, loss of husband and brokenness, this woman and Jesus could dance. As we close our time today, I'd like for you to think about the circumstances of your life right now. Write down five words that describe what you are experiencing in your life the joys, the sorrows, the difficulties, the challenges, and the delights. Now look at your list. That's your stage, my friend. And that's where the Lord is saying, will you dance with me? He's going to teach you new steps and transform you into a dancer. 
I want to close with some words from Streams in the Desert by Mrs. Charles Kalman that are so encouraging and give you this perspective from the dance so that you see that no matter where you are, no matter what's going on, you can dance because you are a dancer. Here's what she says. My child, I have a message for you today. Let me whisper it in your ear that it may gild the glory, gild with glory any storm clouds which may arise and smooth the rough places upon which you may have to tread. It is short, only five words, but let them sink into your inmost soul. Use them as a pillow upon which to rest your weary head. This thing is from me. This thing is from me, you see. Jesus is saying this thing is from me. Dear friend, always remember that God is sovereign. And in every place and at every time, He is inviting you to dance. And so today, at the outset of our journey, may you see the splendor of the dance and say at all times, in all places, yes, Lord, I will dance with you. Now, dear friends, put on your dancing shoes and get ready to dance. Let's pray. Oh Lord, as we think today about the dance and being a woman who has a heart that dances, we are hearing the invitation to an intimate, vibrant, ongoing relationship where you say, will you dance with me? And Lord, today we say, yes, Lord, we will dance. Teach us about the dance, Lord. We cannot wait to lean into your embrace, follow your lead, and yes, dance. We pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you.